we're just basically taking a look at some of Plus Nine's awesome stuff. So I thought I'd start off with this thing. Tell me all about it, mate. Okay, so uh, what we're looking at is a stackable, programmable uh, astrolabe system. Yep. So if you've ever seen models of the solar system at the Science Museum, uh, this is basically running on the same thing. Uh, below it here you can see there's a square, a 9x9 nine nine square that's basically a little bit of power, uh, which is going to be drawn from the, from the station, ultimately, or whatever this is all mounted from. Uh, some mass enhancement some sp automatic speed control uh, that red uh, light at the bottom determines whether it's going uh, clockwise or counterclockwise so you can switch that stuff and program that stuff dial in the speed that you want and then as long as you've set up so that your radiuses don't actually intersect and you don't have bits of the acer lane crashing into other bits of the acer lane it works perfectly uh, so you can see i've got three different units there at three different speeds doing their own orbits at their own programmed speeds. That's amazing. And this is just a three unit, but you can stack this up. You know, obviously the poles are unnecessary. If you yeah. hid those those squares inside a sphere, then it would just look like a bunch of spheres rotating around spheres. Beautiful. Um, the, there, that's, this is just to sort of evoke the science museum quality of, of what the thing is and what it, how it does. Hang on a minute. What the heck is this? Next to it over here, we have a compact five-ring gyroscope. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait a minute. Let me get rid of this call. Oh, I don't think you Wait understand a minute. it. Wait a minute. <laughs> I've hit spacebar. Do You're your worst. Do right, your worst. Right. I'm sitting. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. And oh, my God. Engage. Wait, what? Uh, okay. Are you, are you ready for another one? Yeah, let's do it. Full power. Keep going, keep going. Activate them all. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, what? Wow, I didn't... Now, that was not... I did not expect that. Wait, what? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> wow. That's four, and here's five. Wait, there's more? Oh, yes, wait, there's more. Five. Oh, my God. That's actually bath worthy i love it now of course it's important to mention that um you know this would be a lot smoother the slower it was so on the micro model you will see some sort of jarring maybe on multiplayer that you wouldn't see if these things were exceedingly long what happens if i back away slow oh my god that's what it's really doing oh yeah okay uh... yeah now that you're far away let me turn it back on That's 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 freaking awesome, dude. Now that's a fun ride. Wow. Wow, I want one. Right. Yeah, the beauty of this is that this is just one tiny ship that uh, you know can be undocked, and all you need to do is dock it onto one rotator on any station. That whole system is super compact, and you get five rings of rotation. Awesome. <laughs> So, tell me about um, all this. And then, okay, so next up is something that I've been working on ever since that you finished your PvP map. I was thinking about, oh, how could we sort of blow this thing up and take it to the next level? So this is a copy-pastable PvP capture point system. Yep. Uh, with a scoreboard. If you've played games like Arathi Basin on World of Warcraft, you'll be really familiar with the concept. Basically, there's three capture points. Um, you'll... If your team has captured that capture point, that will be converted into score for your team. So this version of the game runs to 100 and is designed for three capture points. Uh, I've got it on full reset now. Uh, up above us is the scoreboard, which you've seen on your board. Mm. But over here, I've put in uh, this copy-pasteable unit also includes several different styles mm. and outputs for what is going on at every capture point. Where'd you go? Uh, over here. Where's over here? Oh, sorry, uh, turn me, do a 180. What? There you go, I'm over here. Oh, you're over here, so right. So one of the other problems was, because players were far away from where the score is actually being kept, they weren't necessarily getting updates. So I've yeah, they weren't, problem yeah. by creating a reproduced, small size scoreboard that condenses both the score and what's going at all three capture points. So those oh, three lines there on the left yeah. will show you blinking who's capturing what so as it goes up. So basically there's, what, three capture points? Yes. 
And then this wall could be put into the map in several places, like, for example, both spawns and then somewhere more presentable for people watching. Both, both spawns and at each capture point. Ah, and at each capture point. Awesome. It's a good idea. It's like building the UI for a game into a map. Exactly. That's what this is. Um, so the only, and the only indicator that I have left to build on these points is whether uh, whether if when the red is blinking this way or that, which you're about to see, um, is it going up or is it going down? So I have to build indicators for that. But so how does the actual capture point work? So this There's is the a actual button. capture point. It is feature rich. Hang on. Over here. Hang on. <laughs> I'm not there yet. So you hit the button for your color. I'm guessing from where. Correct. I'm... Uh, so these are the inputs that would come up from your consoles above ground. But all this stuff is, of course, all of this whole unit would be hidden underground. The yeah. ground level would be above here somewhere. Oh, okay. Where? Oh, up there. Right, so you so put all yes, this underneath. Everything, everything that this platform is going to bring up would be rising up out of the okay. ground in an ideal fashion. Got it. Um, and all of this, of course, is invisible and happening below ground. So you run your inputs. for. So say the red team comes. Oh, the game has begun. The red team hits their button mm -hmm. and so red starts going up so here's our first indicator is this climbing meter oh excellent i like the rails i love the rails and replicate this to show you just oh hey how exactly how far up to the top is it in terms of percentage and so this so this is also a visual thing that sticks up out the ground correct okay uh, cool over here you can see your basic what's going on indicator light this is now solid red because red has reached all the way at the top yep if blue came along and mashed their button you'll see that starts blinking fast oh ah. we're, we're, now we're losing it once yep. it gets halfway down that's going to change to a slow blink and that's that next set of or gates off that that other clock now it's a slow blink oh and now once it reached the bottom finally it's off altogether nice touch and just like yours, when that reaches the bottom, blue starts going up. Now nice. we have a slow blink on blue, a fast blink on blue about to start happening. And finally a solid blue light. Okay, and then obviously when blue is up, do okay, they... Okay, so now they're basically there are three of these. Yeah, there's three of these, right. Scattered throughout the board. Each of these has this output right next to the top that says, hey, I'm at the top start scoring points for more at my team which then runs follow me back here to our modified scoreboard and this is where it gets fun oh god well at the moment it looks like they both have a score of two is it because it's counting the number of times they've owned the hill uh it's this oh well, you're about to see the clock that scoring runs off now that, oh, that right. thing's at the top here's our clock it's a scoring peg controlled by a <laughs> rather than building an arithmetic unit yeah build which clock i'm using to time the whole machine i'm just using a slow moving rail and i speed that little peg up the more capture points your team has so how did you make that rail run so slow the all of these activation blocks are wired to the rail speed controller but they never turn on so they're there ah. just to slow the whole system down so this is how fast it is with one unit turned on if you get two capture points, then it starts moving like this. Oh, so it actually goes faster if yeah. you have more capture points. I love it. That's beautiful. And yeah, this is what let me, rather than building a whole arithmetic logic unit that had could add yeah. one, two, or three. Side load four, some I mechanics. Just move the clock faster. Yeah, side load mechanics. Capture all three of them. I love and it. And then it'll move like this. That's beautiful. I love the integration of rails into the system because it really allows you to take quite a bit of it out in some situations, so we'll go back. We'll especially with clocks, variable clocks. Brilliant. Okay. And so now, and why don't you walk, go watch that scoreboard yep. and tell, tell me what you want to have happen in the game. What, what, what should be happening gameplay wise and watch. Oh, scoreboard. okay. Right. Well, let's just say that, uh, reds capture the red hill now on the third reds capture so the third capture hill. Point one, two and three. Yeah. So say reds capture the third hill. Um, and then blues capture the second hill. You probably want to zap them from a core, I think. Are you, is that what you're them. doing? Yeah. I'm in build mode. Okay. And then reds capture point one. Ah, 
Ah, yes, the cooldown time. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. The amount of fighting that can go on with this, and there's no need for a leaderboard or anything like that. You can do it all off of the score. Mm -hmm. Then, yeah, so that was the next thing I was thinking is, you know, I have a, I have a beautiful end game sequence because basically this game runs to 100. So whenever one team's 99, this is what I haven't built yet, 99 ticks over to 100, there yep. will be an automatic, I'm um, stopping the game, everything's reset, and it'll display a winner sequence. Their, only their colors lights will turn on map-wide. Ah, beautiful. So when the entire map goes red, red has yes. won, and it's time exactly. to stop. Mm -hmm. That's really clever. I love the sped-up clock when you've captured more points. Do you want to just, um, let's see, you're at, you're at, you're at... Zero nine to twenty something. So do you want to capture? Wait, but the Reds have two hills right now. Yes, they're still behind. So they should about catch to start up. Catching up. Yeah. It should catch up. So let's Eight, just let it run. Now. Yeah, let's let's let it run. Twenty-seven, thirteen. 13. That'll be fourteen before the 14, next one. Fourteen. So yeah. Just like Basin. Fifteen, twenty-eight. That's See, it's, beautiful. It's it is. It is. That's that's perfect. Because right. it's the it's all ratios, right? Based on on the speed. Now it it fudges sometimes because sometimes there's a leftover as to when the logic tick happens. Cause yeah. That's on a di oh, that's on the logic clock, not the when the rail arrives clock. Those pulses go out when it's time for logic to happen. So there can be a little bit of give this way or that, um, but by and large, it's been very accurate. I've been testing it all after. So now these guys are going to catch up. 23, 22, 32. Beautiful. Well, that's amazing. Well, we'll have to integrate that into our new uh, domination type map, which yeah, will be and then point then control. Come back here and check out the scoreboard one last time. You can see what? how is this... there might not be enough time. With just the two of us in the zone, you could probably watch both update. At the yeah, I'm, 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 I'm looking at this other smaller one. I actually really like this smaller one you've made. It's a slightly different style because the LEDs are smaller. Yeah. 34, Well, 28. I wanted to make sure it was something that I could fit inside the, the team's spawn base. So while you're waiting to spawn, you know who has what capture points and what the score is. Do you know what the funny thing is, Plus? I'm in astronaut mode and I'm miles away and the big board is still updating from where I'm at. There, just, there aren't as many players in this system. Oh, that's why. Right, got it. We're just able to pull the updates. So this shows, which I love it. This is beautiful. It's exactly what we need for the map. Um, what about if I go ahead and start making the next map, and I'll leave enough room for you to paste the mechanics in, and I won't even bother making any until it comes to the, you know what I mean? I would say once you get to the point where you're sketching space, bring me in, because I want to detail that crap. I want to detail Oh, no. It. <laughs> well, that's the thing. See, I was thinking. Okay, so I've also got some. I, I don't know. I've got some. Are we? Are we filming? Or are you about? Yeah. To no, 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 no. I'm still filming. Okay, All right. Well, I might I dabble here. No, no, that's okay. Basically, guys, um, that was the a little plus nine update. We're going to be using this in the next map. Obviously, you can hear we're still work in progress, collaborating, styling on that thing. So, spitballs have to happen. But basically, thanks for watching this video. Give it a share, and if you liked it. Um, watch more of them. So yeah, see you next time.